Welcome everyone, I hope you're having a brilliant start to the weekend, but today we are going to be having Omen leading the forces of Grand Cathay going up against Extreme Strategy as the Ogre Kingdoms. Now we're going to be playing on Battle for Itza, and uh, it's going to be a very interesting fight today. So on the left hand side, nice and vanguarded, is going to be one unit of the Noblar Trappers, ready to get onto Domination Point 2. Over in the trees, hiding very sneakily, are going to be the incredibly expensive Crushers. Now the Great Weapons here, I believe at 1,800 gold cost, but they do bring anti-large and armor piercing to the battlefield with a 120 armor class. So they're very, very heavily armored, good mobility there for the armor class, and uh, a particular nuisance for sure. So for the main battle force, we are going to see two units of the lead belchers. Very good here with the armor piercing. Not great in melee combat. They can get taken down by rather fast units. And they're going to be protected by the double iron guts in the back. And these bad boys have 100 armor piercing weapon strength. And relatively good armor here, considering they're part of the Ogre Kingdoms. Now for the Lord Chinese, we are going to have Scrag the Slaughterer. Bringing the big cauldron of the Great Moor. Giving all that healing and base weapon damage increases. We're also going to have the Moor, the Bone Crusher and the Ball Gorger. So here with the triple ability, so we're not going to have the extra ingredients, nor are we going to have any healing from Scrag. We are going to be having the Hunter as the hero on the side, good anti-large and armor-piercing missiles. You can throw those big javelins at a 120 range. He's going to be having the abilities of Bang Stick, as well as the Crippling Throw, which can be rather devastating. So, do you hear the Rohirrim call? As we see here, Peasant Horseman backed up by Jade Lancers with the Triple Gold Chevron coming here throughout the battlefield. Yes, you're right. There's going to be a full cavalry build coming from Omen. In the sky, we are going to have the Lord of Yin here with the Arcane Conduit, the Mastery of Element Winds, the Ancestral Warriors, and the Missile Mirror. In the backside, we are going to be having more Jade Lancers and a Wujing War Compass. Even here, coming at a Triple Gold Chevron, the big bad boy is going to be bringing the Nexus of Element Winds, an extra of the Mastery of Element Winds, the Celestial Comet, and then also here the Celestial Lightning. So really super fun build here coming from Omen. I love the full cavalry effect, but we've got to be careful there of those lead belchers. They'll shred through any of the cavalry here rather quickly. Crosses in the back are also going to be a bit of a nuisance, anti-large and armor piercing for the cavalry. So they're going to have good mass here to pin in other cavalry and certainly take them down rather quickly. Jade Lancers here, two units on the right-hand side, one moving into the middle as well. As we get the Lord Choice coming across, the Lead Belters have had a Missile Mirror on them, so we can see they are going to be firing! They're actually going to be shooting back upon themselves, which is a little bit of an issue here. We can see that Extreme Strategy isn't going to be seeing this, so there's going to be a lot of damage here coming on back on to the Lead Belters themselves. Over on the left-hand side, we do see the Lead Belters fighting up against Peasant Horsemen. They do manage to get the charge. I think a couple of cannon fire missiles were coming into the face of them as well. So they're going to get dragged down rather quickly. So for summons, we are going to see some more of the Peasant Horsemen charging forward. You just want to use this uh, cheap, cheerful cavalry to get into the face here of the Lead Belters and certainly compromise them where you can. So it looks like the majority of the Ogre Kingdom is going over towards Domination Point 3, trying to capture one of the points there. Over on the right hand side we do see Jade Lancers and the Wushi War Compass just going to be hanging around, acting all cool, shooting some people here outside the school. But in the middle we are going to see the Noblar Trappers breaking down thanks to the Double Jade Lancer Sandwich. Over on the left we still see the Jade Lancers and we still have the Crushers on the trees, a little bit surprised about that. More fine Cavalry and Crushers, that's going to be about 3,000 gold here just hanging around, not really doing too much. And uh, yeah, a couple of units here of the cheap cavalry, but they do have triple gold chevron going to be fighting up against the lead belchers. They're going to charge in and uh, they're going to try and do as much damage as they possibly can. The great weapons here, oh no, he's going to be another missile mirror on top of the lead belchers. They're going to be shooting themselves down to a very low model count of 12, losing four models here already. And we do see the great weapons here just charging off up against the cavalry. One does get pushed off the edge of the mat, so pretty good stuff coming there, but we can get now the resummon here from Omen. So we actually have some of the more peasant horsemen charging the backside up against the lead belchers. There's just been relentless cavalry charges here from the Rohirrim as they're going to be coming forward and compromising pretty much every strong element of the build of the Ogre Kingdoms. In the trees we do see Jane Lancers getting the downhill charge on the crushers with the great weapons. More Morphine cavalry coming forward. Jade Lancers in the backside just being a bit of a nuisance over here on the left. 17 seconds till we open up, we do actually have the Astromancer in the pocket. He's going to be bringing the Harmonic Convergence. Of course, we're going to be at 130%, so it's going to give a, a higher melee defense and melee attack buff. And also, we're going to get an increased intensity yet again 
because we are now going to get an alchemist on the battlefield. The more of these we summon, the more of the mastery of element wins we get here on the battlefield. We're actually going to be bringing the elixir of puissance as well as the elixir of iron skin and the spells of the searing doom and the plague of rust. So, so the cavalry are going to be rotating over here to domination point two. Domination point three is going to be firmly in control here of the ogre kingdoms. Not too many of their range tools left, and that's going to be rather painful. And we do see them filing here into the middle. They're actually going to be shooting up against the peasant horsemen. Wouldn't mind actually seeing a missile mirror going down on these lead belchers being a you know a little bit of a nightmare as well. Coming over the top though, we do see the cavalry charging across, but we see cannons just firing down the line here up against the cavalry contingent. And uh, yeah, they're certainly taking quite a few casualties here upon the hill. Look at this! Oh my god, there's so many dead horsemen. They charge in the back here up against the lead belchers. Very, very good work indeed. We are perhaps going to be seeing... Yes, there we go. We do see a crusher coming down. Thump right down on top here of the cavalry. Very good damage indeed. So we are going to see some more cavalry rear-charging up against the kind of exposed lead belchers. You definitely want to have your infantry forward. We do get a rear charge on the lead belchers and very, very good damage indeed. Peasant horsemen are going to be compromising where possible and pretty much just keeping the Ogre King to force here on Domination Point 3. Now in the middle we are going to see more Peasant horsemen rotating as they have captured Domination Point 1 and Domination Point 2, particularly for now, is going to be in the Ogre Kingdom favour. In the backside, the Morfang Cavalry just going to be hanging around. Definitely obviously these getting more across the battlefield. We do see some now starting to move. Uh, looks like the Alchemist doesn't want any sort of action here, and neither does the Astromancer. And in the back, we are actually going to be compromising Jade Lancers up against the Lead Belchers. So we're trying to get some Lead Belchers forward yet again, but they're going to be fighting. And I think here's something that's really important for new players coming forward in Total Warhammer, especially in the multiplayer scene. You need to have some infantry units to protect your backline range. And also, this is going to happen quite a bit, where you get fast cavalry contingent getting into the backside and compromising them before they can even do any sort of major damage. Over the right hand side we do see one unit of the Peasant Horsemen bravely returning here to the battlefield. They were so close to getting pushed off and uh, we do see more of them coming back here as well. But there's uh, very little of the lead belchers left. 11 models at 1500 HP. This cavalry could come in the back here and certainly finish them off. But it looks like they are going to spot them. So we are going to get some shots here on the battlefield. Now we do take the lead here with Omen. Grand Cathay now in the middle, going to be getting compromised by the Morfang Cavalry. The big bad boys do bring bucket loads of armor piercing here to the battlefield, but the peasants, or should we say actually the Jade Lancers with the peasant horsemen, are going to be trying to fight here up against the cavalry. We do have the Lord Choice in there as well, 440 weapon strength. It's only do some good work, even with 120 armor. We actually see the Wuxing War Compass, the uh, Oxes of old, are going to be fighting here with 160 weapon strength. These bad boys at the Triple Gold Chevron also got some pretty decent melee attack and melee defense stats. Now we do find the Morfang Cavalry breaking. And I'd like to see some of the cavalry in the trees doing a bit of a better fight. We do see Jade Lancers fighting up against the Crush. I think the Crush are doing very well, but it's just going to be so many numbers of Jade Lancers. They're going to very, very, you know, slowly and painfully drive down these elite Crushers. In the backside, we do have some Manning to Great Weapons coming to the battlefield, and they're going to be very good anti large armor piercing, very strong at dealing with the cavalry contingents, and they can do very well here to stay alongside their Lib Belcher brothers. In the back, the Jade Lancers, they are going to be having 16 models. Wouldn't mind seeing these going off the battlefield, maybe allowing them to recover a little bit and coming back in at a later stage. We do see the Wuxing War Compass just hanging around, kind of, you know, near the Morphan Cavalry that are going to be broken. Wouldn't mind seeing the Alchemist kind of pushing off the Morphan Cavalry, maybe kind of, you know, guiding them around the battlefield, making sure they take a while to get off here. Wouldn't want to see those coming back too soon. In the middle, we have Peasant Horsemen going to be rotating. We do actually strongly have Domination Point 3. I'd like to see a few of these units rotating, maybe putting a bit of pressure here on Domination Point 1. There's going to be 1,600 tickets going up against 1,100. Pretty close here so far. We do see the Hunter kind of yeeting around the battlefield. I think he's uh, trying to get uh, some good jab into the backside here of the Horsemen. We do see the Lead Belchers uh, not going to protect it here. So we are going to find the Cavalry charging forward up against the Lead Belchers. Uh, they do get their spears down. They're going to be charging. or oh, they going to be spears. Oh, they're going to be pitchforks. No, they are spears. They are spears. And they're these little lances that they have. are going to be uh, doing some pretty good poke here up against the lead belchers. In the back side, we have more jade lances fighting here up against the Manning to Great Weapons. They're going to thump the jade lances to an inch within their life. And uh, we are now going to get the lead belchers a little bit free here. And I'd like to see the Lord Choice kind of, you know, beating out a couple of shots from the lead belchers. Maybe using a missile mirror, trying to see if we can whittle down these numbers. Now, they're going to be firing into the trade up against the jade lances. Two units. Uh, one could be rather healthy, the other one is going to be looking, uh, you know, rather damaged. Uh, we do have the Astromancer ready to go. Uh, it's still going to be having that spell of a harmonic convergence. That's now going to be 35-35, which is incredibly powerful for four winds of magic. If you also overcast that, you also do get additional armor, which is uh, quite nice. And we do see a Crusher going down, trying to predict the movement there of the Peasant Horseman. And sadly, it is going to be a miss. 
fighting in the back 20 here up against the lead belt, just, just getting compromised. Omen is just relentless here with the cheap cavalry, just keeping the lead belt just busy at every moment here on the battlefield. We do see uh, the crushers having a bit of a weird animation from far away. I'm sure if we got closer, yeah, there we go. They have a bit of a um, sort of a slide animation when you get far away, which is quite hilarious. But uh, the Iron Guts here going to be holding on Domination Point 3. Domination Point 1 is going to be slightly getting compromised, but it looks like it is going to be returning back down to normal. And uh, Domination Point 2 is going to be well and truly uh, in control of Granica Thane. In the back side, we're going to be trapping here. And this is one of the weaknesses I do see of this map. Uh, of course, there's only two spawn points right direct here at the back side of the map. Definitely want to see some more deployments here on either side. It's very easy to trap your opponent here in the back, as you can see. And the Wolfang Cavalry going to charge forward. These boys with the uh, ginormous clubs are going to be thumping here up against the Ashramansa and some of the Jade Lancers. They have brilliant armor piercing, so they can really thump quite nicely up against the Jade Lancers. So we're going to be firing into the trees. That certainly w wouldn't be where I would fire. I'm trying to see if I can get, you know, maybe firing towards Domination Point 1. Or, you know, there's going to be some units certainly coming out of the uh, spawn deployment here from Grand Cafe. That's certainly where I would focus my gun fire. Now, we do see here, Peasant Horse, we're going to be charging back, trying to protect here their Domination Point 1. We do manage to see now some Iron Guts rotating in the sky. We do actually have some great long mars, Triple Cold Chevron as well. So these bad boys certainly would have been very expensive. They're now going to be fighting up against the Morphine Cavalry. 65 weapon strength with 75 charge bonus. It's going to be fighting here in the middle. And uh, the Morphine Cavalry, they do have 90 armor. And they do have 120 weapon strength with armor piercing. So they should do pretty well here, you would have thought. But of course, uh, Great Lombards have pretty good melee defense here at 43. So they're going to do pretty well overall. Over on the left-hand side, we actually see some man eaters and some man eater great weapons charging. Two great weapons actually charging over to the left-hand side. This could get a pretty close game here, actually, if we push correctly with the Ogre Kingdoms. They are going to hold Domination Point 3. I think leaving that one open could be a bit of a mistake, considering it's going to be a full cavalry contingent here. There we go. We do see the return. So we do actually have the Lord Choice Scrag still going to be fighting here up against the Peasant Horseman. He's going to be up to 65 kills so far. 86 for the Iron Guts. And the Morphan Cavalry are going to be at 14. Great Lombard's going to be fighting here in the middle. They're going to be looking rather healthy at 6,000 HP. And we are going to have the Lord of Yin in the sky. Wouldn't mind seeing him maybe coming over to the backside and compromising quite a few of the lead belchers. Now they're going to be fighting in combat here up against the Great Longbars. Don't need much armor piercing here. So that weapon strength plus that charge bonus is going to be doing very well up against the lightly armored lead belchers. More Blood Trappers in the middle, they're going to be, uh, you know, trying to see if we can slow down the Great Long Mars, be a bit of a nuisance, and, you know, maybe kind of protect here, dissipate some of the damage onto them, rather than the Lead Belchers, but they're going to be, you know, heavily compromised here in the back. So, it looks like here we have some Peasant Horsemen in the back, one has been summoned of the Jade Lancers, they're maybe going to be rotating over here to Domination Point 2. So, we might be seeing a spell here, is this going to be a Celestial Lightning, or is this, could this be a Comet of Cassandora, potentially, coming down on the Managed Great Weapons? It's actually going to be a Comet of Cassandora. Pretty good damage here on the Man Eater Great Weapons. Now we can charge in here with the Great Long Mars. We only have 40 armor for the Man Eater Great Weapons, so they're actually going to take quite a bit of weapon strength damage from the Great Long Mars Riders as we move in with the Jade Lancers. They do capture Domination Point 2, which is actually going to bring this game back to a pretty close one. In the middle of the Ogre Kingdoms, are actually capturing it. I wouldn't mind seeing some rotations around the battlefield. In the middle, the Morphan Cavalry going to be summoned here. We have some more Lead Belchers coming forward. We are going to destroy one unit of the Great Weapons, but the second one's going to be fighting rather well. They'll certainly get some good value here for themselves, for sure. These Great Weapons are going to be at 91 kills, 2,100. The second one here going to be at 25 with 1,600. So looking good here so far. They're going to be fighting relatively well. Great Longmars and Jade Lancers going to be holding down the fort. Trying to see if they can capture here. They don't have as much capture weight as the infantry from the Ogre Kingdoms. And uh, all units count as just regular infantry rather than monstrous infantry. Because otherwise the Ogre Kingdoms would rather struggle to capture. Now we do see the Alchemist coming across. He's going to be fighting here up against the man. He's trying to support. Here we go. A good fly out and good rear charge with the Great Longmars. Wavering here is going to be the man eaters. And they should be breaking. We should be capturing Domination Point 2 here rather shortly. But this game is going to be super close. We do see the Moor here getting a nice juicy spell on top of the Peasant Horseman. And that, that more spell is a, such a good air effect damage. It's really good armor piercing, but still, it's going to delete Peasant Horseman all the same. So we do actually see here the Shogun Lord of Yin going to be fighting up against Scrag the Slaughterer. As he's just going to be shredding down here with those hooks. Oh my god, so much blood as we see the cauldron just whipping around through the horseman. You can see so many dead cavalry and lead belchers here on the floor. Scrag is just going to be slaughtering through all of his enemies. And it looks like here, Domination Point 3 and 1 here is going to be held. 4,300 for the forces of the Oka Kingdoms going up against 3,800 
here from Grand Cafe. Can they capture Domination Point 2 quick enough? I'm really not too sure, but we need to start rotating as quickly as humanly possible to Domination Point 1. We could be struggling here for numbers. We do see Jade Lancers coming forward. More fan cavalry going to be cleaning up the backside of the Astra Mansa. The Lord Choice here going to be fighting up against the Lead Belchers. Just keeping them compromised is very, very strong stuff indeed. Crushes the Great Bombers now at the Silver Chevron. 127 kills for them. Uh, we do actually see the Morphan Cavalry, uh, just, you know, getting actually taken down here by the Great Long Mars. So pretty good stuff there from the Long Mars. If we charge in with the Lancers and get a rear charge here with the Great Long Mars, we can actually maybe do some good work here up against the Crushes the Great Weapons. Lead Belchers getting compromised by the Alchemist, but that is going to be the win. GG's and well played to the Ogre Kingdoms and Extreme Strategy. Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, this here isn't you know, uh, the, the toppest of top tier gameplay, but it was a, a super fun meme game that I really wanted to cast. It looked absolutely hilarious. I loved, um, you know, the theme here coming from Grand Cathay, the full Rohirrim coming forward from Omen. He's an absolute champion. And uh, what a, you know, what a display you put on. 1,036 there for the Lord of Yin with uh, 1,300, 800 for the Jade Lancers, 1,080 and 500 with 400. So yeah, pretty good stuff overall. I'd say for the most part, probably not paying for themselves, but still doing rather well considering what they were coming up against. 920 for the Wuxing War Compass and 1,800 for the Peasant Horseman. My God, very, very good work. Of course, you know, those uh, lead belchers, very expensive. So taking those down is uh, quite a lot of uh, battle value. 1,350, 1,200 coming in for the Double Great Long Mars with 240 for the Astromancer and 200 for the Alchemist. 500, sorry, 659 there for the Peasant Horseman, 680 and 675. So pretty good stuff overall. And uh, yeah, really, really like this build. I really also like the fact that we were using um, the Missile Mirror. I think it's very, very strong here against Lead Belchers. If you don't notice it, you could really destroy the Lead Belchers rather quickly. 1,565 there for Scrag. We got uh, 2,800 as well for 132 kills for the Crusher Great Weapons with 104 for the Hunters. 624, 1,400 for the Iron Guts, with also 1,080 and 800 for the Lead Belchers. 250 for the Noblar Trappers, with the... Oh, we do actually have an Iron Blaster, but we didn't manage to get a summon, that's a bit of a shame there. But 2,100 for the Manny to Great Weapons, and 1,980 is a very good performance overall. 720, 1,680 for the Morphan Cavalry, with 360 and 850. So GG's and well played here to both of the players. Thank you very much, Omen, for sending in the loss and this fantastic Rohirrim build. I know it was a massive meme and I really, really appreciate it. If you guys did too, please smash that like button. Feel free to leave a comment down below and subscribe if you haven't already. Other than that, I've been your boy Logic. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you all very soon.